So in this video, let's explore how a message broker like RabbitMQ can make your microservices more reliable. Let's explore this first scenario here where we have the common case of an order service communicating with a payment service. Now, this is a communication could be GRPC, HTTP, but what this means is that this is a synchronous communication. If the user comes and makes a request to the orders, basically he is creating an order, uh, we are going to communicate with the payment service, which in turn is going to be synchronous. So we are waiting for the response of the payment service to complete. Now, what happens if the payment service is down and we want to scale this out? For example, uh, we want to make more instances of the payment service. Uh, maybe the, ser the service is even dead altogether. So how do we handle this case? And this is where message brokers like RabbitMQ come into play because they can help us make our system more reliable. And I'm going to show you how in this very quick introduction to RabbitMQ and message brokers in Golang. Now, unlike the previous example, in this case here, we have um, a simple example where we have a gateway service, which is communicating with another service, or it could be here also a payment service. Uh, but basically, the way that we communicate is not direct, so we are not uh, doing the communication synchronous, we are doing asynchronous, which in this case, we push a message to RabbitMQ, and then RabbitMQ will decide how to best deliver to the consumer. So we produce a message and we consume. Now, everything here in between, this is what we're going to explain in this video, because this is a more complex topic, but we are going to cover all of this into more detail into the full microservice project that is about to drop. Uh, so stay tuned for that as well. So just by looking at this diagram here, we know that our services are decoupled. So they operate independently. So they are different servers. So as you can see, this is server one, server two. And this reduces the risk of cascading failures. Basically, if the server two is on, it's not going to impact the server one here with the gateway service. So this is one of the advantages, of course, of the microservice architecture, not related to this. But for example, if the consumer, uh, in this case, the order service has a lot of traffic, a lot of traffic. So for example, uh, it is in high demand. What you can do, for example, is have these queues. So these queues are going to hold the messages from the producer. And basically what's going to happen is that they are going to consume from this queue instead of being a direct communication. So if it's taking 10 seconds to produce, uh, to consume one message, basically we have this queue of message in order so we can make sure the order will be de delivered in order as well as the durability of these messages. So if the RabbitMQ dies, these messages can be stored into disk. So when we boot up everything again, these services are going to read the messages back again. I'm going to show you this in uh, the later stage of the video when we're going to code all of this. And all of this is related to the reliability and stability of our system as a whole, of our microservice. Now, other mechanisms that we can use at our disposal that we can do with RabbitMQ and other message brokers, really, which the first one is retry. So imagine in this case that we send a message. Now this message is being delivered to the consumer. But for some reason here in the consumer, something fails. Uh, instead of discarding the message, we send this message back to the queue. So this is a retry mechanism and it's going to be an exponential retry, for example. So it's going to take more time, the next one, and then it fails again. Uh, and then it tries again. And then there is a max of three retries, for example. Uh, this is something that we can implement. So we're going to implement this into the, the full microservice course. And basically, at, when reaching the, the maximum retries, we can send these to a dead letter queue, which is going to be storing our messages. And then we can do whatever we want with those messages so they are not lost. And of course, uh, another really important feature of uh, message brokers like RabbitMQ or even Kafka is the way to send the messages that the producers send to the consumers. So in this case, in RabbitMQ, we have the idea of the exchanges and the queues. You can imagine in, in Kafka, I'm not that, that familiar with Kafka, but there you have topics, which is something similar to this. And basically, this consumer is only receiving the messages that he subscribes to, so the queue that he's listening to. 
so he doesn't receive the whole system-wide messages. So by enabling the filtering, you can have fine-grained control of how the messages end up in your services, in your system. And all of these features are at the center of building events-driven applications, like this one that we have here. So before we get coding this example, I just want to show you the multiple types of exchanges that we have in RabbitMQ. This is very important, and I'm going to leave the link to this article here, uh, to this documentation below, so you can see how the multiple types influence the way that the message is delivered. I'm going to cover the direct and the fan out because these are the ones that you're going to be using. So the direct exchange is the most simple because you have an exchange, a direct one, and what happens is that when you publish a message there, it's going to deliver that message based on a routing key to that queue. So for example, here on the example, we have a producer which sends a message directly to this uh, exchange. And here we have two queues which their binding key is orange, black and green. So whenever a message comes with, for example, the black or the orange, so if it goes with the orange key, it's going to be redirected to this queue. If not, it's going to be directed to one of these two. So this is what exchanges do. They make sure to send the message to the right queue. And the fan out, for example, here on this example, it's when you want to broadcast the same message to multiple queues. So we want to make sure that, for example, these two consumers receive the same message and they're going to do different things with it, ideally. And this is basically it. Now let's get our hands into code and I'm going to show you how you can set up this project really quick. So here is the install documentation if you want to install it yourself. Basically, you can just do a, rock, uh, a Docker run and basically run this into a container. I'm going to do something similar. I have here Docker Compose just running an instance of RabbitMQ3. And if you have any problems installing it, there's one common problem, which is that you're going to have some cache problem. If you have that, just delete the container or the volume and try again. I had that problem before as well. So the project is very simple. This is the, the practical example that we, the theoretical example that we saw before. So here you have the orders and the payment service, and all of this is inside a Go workspace uh, folder. Basically, we have also the common package, which is a set of reusable functions that we can use across all of the services. Go workspaces are very nice for this. And here I have the RabbitMQ uh, module. Basically, all it says, it has a, a reusable function which creates a connection. And then it also uh, creates the exchanges. So we are declaring the direct exchange, which we're not going to use for now, but I just want to show how you can do this. And then the fan out exchange with the order created event here. This is the name for it. And this is just here a string up here. Then we turn the channel and, and uh, close. Then here on the types, I just have the order and the item struct. Very simple. What we're going to do is that we're going to boot up the payment and the order service. And the order is going to send an event to the payment. And the payment is going to generate a payment link and send it out to whomever wants. Basically, uh, this is what we're going to do. So the order service, again, is very simple as well. How it does, it consumes the, that function. It does the connection. Then here we are declaring our queue. So this is going to be the queue for the orders. As you can see, we have the order created event here. Uh, I'm also setting to true the auto delete, the, um, the durable. So the messages are going to be durable, even if the RabbitMQ is down and the rest of the files, I'm setting them to false as well. You can check them better into the documentation. They explain it better than I do. Then we are marshalling just an order. Basically, I'm going to send this as bytes to the queue. And here, this is how we publish our message. Uh, I'm going to send to the queue.s name. So this is the name of the queue. You can just consume it like that. And then I send the marshaled order into the body. And the content type is going to be uh, JSON. Basically, then on the payment service, we listen for this. So if you go back here, again, we're doing a connection. But here we are listening. Here again, we also declare the queue because we don't know which service is going to boot up first. So I always do this on both uh, ends. Then here we consume it. So we get the channel, we consume from this queue and we get a bunch of messages, which is a channel. And here I have an infinite channel just so we can have an infinite loop here. Then inside of a go routine, I'm looping over the messages that we receive. I'm logging it. I'm unmarshalling that message. And then basically I just create a dummy payment link. 
and here is the the code for that of course this is just an example uh, and then but for some reason if the payment link returns an error we can handle it here and i wrote here that we can handle the retry logic here because in the full microservices course that is about to drop we're going to implement with the retry with exponential back off so this is going to be the place where you could do it and if the retry fails all of the times we can send that message to uh, that letter queue so this is pretty much it let me show you how to run all of this so here in the terminal i'm going to create a docker compose app i'm going to boot up our mysql um our rabbit mq instance it's going to boot up and then um, I'm going to go here and I'm going to start the order service and the payment service. So I'm going to start with the payment service because this is a listener, so it's listening. But when I run the, the order service, it's going to send a message. So I just want to make sure that the payment is up before. And if I do this, you can see that we have published an order. And here we have received this order here and we have generated our link correctly. So I send it multiple times. You can see that we are receiving the message every time. Now, if we go to the RabbitMQ UI, because the image that I'm running on my Docker Compose comes with the RabbitMQ management UI. Uh, let me make sure this is uh, increased the font. And as you can see, this is the fault that we have uh, created. We have sent messages and they have been uh, act, so they have been acknowledged. If for some reason messages are here dangling, we can see it here. We can see all of the status here, but very quickly, I want to show you this UI as well. But if you go back here, what happens if we send a message and the payment service is not listening? So I'm going to do that. So I'm going to just publish a message. I'm going to publish twice, one more time. And basically, if we go back to our diagram, we're going to see in a bit that these messages have not been delivered. They are here on the queue waiting. As you can see, we have three messages which are ready and they are not being delivered. Now, if I go back to the payment service and I boot it up now, what's going to happen is that it's going to read those messages from the queue, all of them, all of the, the three messages, and it's going to process them at once when he can. So this has been RabbitMQ and message brokers in general, because if you know how to work with RabbitMQ or Kafka, you can work with any other Rabbit, uh, with any other message broker that you want. The idea behind them is the same. So if you like this video, you know what to do and I see you on the next one.